Hello, my name is Alana. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And, in, and on this channel, we review books in depth. That is my favorite thing to do. Also, there are the occasional book hauls. I do plan to, I have gotten quite a few requests to do a bookshelf tour. I do plan to do that at some time. This is not my only bookshelf. I have one other bookshelf in my living room. That is where I keep the bulk of my classics. I have a decent Penguin English Library classic collection and um yeah I mean some good titles Thomas Hardy and Henry James and quite a few Dickens and Elizabeth Gaskell so I keep those in my living room because I like to use books as artwork as well like I think they help decorate a home so I keep them in there <laughs> and also I have like Les Mis and Moby Dick and some there are three musketeers is out there I've got some other stuff out there but the this other than that, these are all my books. And I still plan to do an annotating video, how I annotate my books. I need to, I have some old Instagram posts about that. I need to update that. That might take me some time. What was something else? There are a couple of books that I want to review that I reviewed a couple of years ago. I want to do a dedicated video to them. One of them is Lolita. I read Lolita in 2021. Must discuss. It lives in my head rent free. I plan to revisit that book multiple times. Next time I read that book, I want to read an annotated version of the book. That book, I know I missed so many references. That book, Nabokov, man. And A Little Life, because to me, A Little Life and Lolita in, are in conversation. And I've never seen anybody talk about that. I talked about it in my review when I reviewed A Little Life back in 2021 on my Instagram, I I had to split my A Little Life review into two separate posts. I did a halfway review and then I reviewed the second half of the book. That book, there's so much to discuss. And I have, I mentioned certain things that I hadn't seen anybody else talk about. And so I wanted to do a dedicated video. It would be a long video and I would bring Lolita into that conversation. Those are some things I have pending, but... Alas, time is, time is limited <laughs> when you work full time and you also dance several hours a week and all that other stuff. So let's, let's dive in. This week we have a fun book to discuss, The Rosie Project by Mr. Simpson. I cannot figure out how to pronounce his first name, so I'm not even going to try to do the man the disservice. This book was a book that was recommended to me by my sister. And so my sister is a fan of reading nonfiction. She loves a good memoir. She loves a good memoir and she also loves a good gulag memoir. <laughs> like that is her cup of tea. My sister loves the archipelago, the archipelago, the gulags, all that stuff. Yeah, that's my sister's. She loves nonfiction more than fiction. Um, but she read The Rosie Project a couple of years ago. And I remember when she was reading it, she was laughing out loud. And did you guys hear that cicada? A bug shouldn't sound like it's screaming. It's just weird. Anyway, so my sister loved The Rosie Project. Or she, I'll say she really enjoyed it. She said it was laugh out loud funny. She called it smart humor. She also told me, I don't know if she remembers this while she was reading the book. She was like, well, she did tell me, I think you'll really enjoy this. I also think that you'll find this relatable. So I was like, I got to read this. And I do like to buffer my denser reads with books that are just fun. But this book is just fun, yes. But it also is very, very smart humor. And I found that the main character was highly relatable. Changing to meet someone else's expectations may not be a good idea. You may end up resenting it. So in The Rosie Project, our main character is Don Tillman. He is a socially awkward genetics professor and he's looking for a wife he hasn't had the best of luck in relationships because he is so socially different he has a very however one reason why our man don has not had the best luck not just in romantic relationships but just in relationships in general he has high standards and so in order to find a wife, he develops the wife project 
And the Wife Project is a survey that he created or he creates to weed out the women that will not meet his criteria because he leads a very strict regimented life. Through this endeavor, he meets a woman named Rosie. Rosie definitely has some major red flags according to Don's survey. Like for one, she, she smokes. That's a big no-no for Don, no smoking. And she has, she's dyed her hair red. She likes to wear all black. You know, she's, she's a little edgy. And however, despite the fact that Miss Rosie has some red flags, according to Don, right? They still start, they get on quite well. And so they also get to know one, one another on a deeper level because Rosie has the suspicion that the man that grew up being her fa- as her father was not, is act- not actually her biological father. So Don and Rosie thus come up with the father project, trying to find out who her biological father is. And they get to know each other that way. And so Don then has to kind of push himself outside of his comfort zone because he has to adapt to this woman who doesn't necessarily meet the image that he thought he wanted. And so from there, we see how this relationship or if this relationship progresses further. So we know very early on, I mean, within the first five pages, if not less than that, that Don's social awkwardness is implied because Don is autistic. Don is never directly called autistic, but the author makes this very clear that Don is autistic. And one of the, his friends, he has a married couple that there's a married couple that he's friends with. Don had this conversation with autism. He was talking about it in his genetics class. And then the wife of his friend likes, you don't see anything similar here. He's like, no, why should I? Like he, he really has a blindness in some cases about himself. But it's implied. You can read between the lines. Don is, is definitely on the spectrum. He is quite clinical. He is extremely regimented. There are a lot of things in social interactions and types of humor that he just doesn't get. Other people do not get him because he can be quite monotone. He's almost too direct. And so because he is operating outside of these social norms, behavior norms, he has had a lot of issues regarding relationships with his family, with other friends, and it's definitely romantically. One critique that I have seen often about this book is that it stereotypes autism. And yes, autism is on a spectrum. Um, There are people who are so high functioning, you would not know that they were autistic at all. And if they were to tell you, oh, I'm actually autistic, they're actually not even believed because they're so good at masking. Then you have some people who are somewhere in between extremely high functioning and nonverbal. And I've done a lot of research into autism. And so just, I've researched a lot of things. <laughs> just what I was telling my coworker, side note, I was telling my coworker on the elevator. I was like, I spent like an entire month watching volcano documentaries <laughs> a couple of summers ago. It was watching live cams of volcanoes going off for fun because I just was fascinated by volcanoes. Then last summer I spent like a couple of weeks watching these documentaries on whales just trying to, I just like to absorb information and I hyper-focus on something. So I have spent some time, I hyper-focus on autism at one point. So I'm paraphrasing a lot. Don't You can come for me in the comments if I want to, but I have to generalize. But yes, it's in the way that autism presents often in males and females can be different. And women go vastly uh, um, underdiagnosed because there are hypotheses about that, about how women tend to socialize and mask in different ways so it can be difficult more difficult to detect in high functioning women so yes all of that to say attention span all of that to say people have critiqued this book by being stereotypical but there are people who are on the spectrum of autism that are like don so i mean i will say this many so yes Don is a character and I don't, I don't know if the author is autistic. I don't know. He did. I don't know, but this is a fictional character. And sometimes I do think that authors have to be a little bit more stereotypical because that's not the story he's telling. He's not writing about the new, the nuances of autism. 
that's not what he's writing about. This character just so happens to be autistic and he has to, he just so happens to write him in a way that it's very recognizable. I think that sometimes, myself included, I'm guilty of this. As readers, we project what we want, what we wanted the author to have done onto the author and these characters. And sometimes we do have to try to learn to remove ourselves from a narrative and just accept it for what it is. Not saying that it's not a critique, sure, if that's what you want to critique, but I'm just saying we sometimes have to remind ourselves is this is what I this this is what I wanted, but what is the author actually doing? Um, and I will say this, this is gonna be it's this is gonna be a controversial statement for some in the book world. Not everybody needs to see themselves in literature. Some I see things like, oh, representation matters, but it, it's not important for everybody. I'm one of those readers. I do not need to see myself represented in literature. I just don't. Um, do you? I just don't. I don't care. I do not care if I'm represented in literature. When I read a book, I just want to connect with that reader. I can connect with, I have connect, sorry, I can connect with that, those characters. I have connected with characters that look nothing like me, that have nothing to do with my background because at the core, there's a human experience, right? So I don't need to see myself, not necessarily. If it happens, cool, relatable. But if it doesn't, I don't care. Anyway, I did love Don as a character. He was super funny and to me, I found him highly relatable. The Simpson wrote him, wrote this book and wrote this character. It's narrated by Don's perspective with smart humor. I laughed so much throughout this book. I mean, LOL out loud laughing. And my sister was like, <laughs> you're reading that book. <laughs> um, this, because whether or not you agree with how the author portrays autism in this book, I think that it's an ode to those in general who just out, who are quirky or out or operate outside of function outside of societal behavioral norms in general like you're going to be able to relate to this book in some way if you have ever been a bit of a misfit fault asperger's isn't a fault it's a variant it's potentially a major advantage asperger's syndrome is associated with organization focus innovation and sorry Innovative thinking and rational detachment. That is a quote from Don. <laughs> Naturally, the books and research papers describe the symptoms of Asperger's syndrome, and I formed a provisional conclusion that most of these were simply variations in human brain function that have been inappropriately medicalized because they did not fit the social norms, constructed social norms that reflected the most common human configurations rather than the full range. Again, Don. Don speaks in this very technical almost stilted clinical way and he's written that way but again you can tell that Simpson himself is highly intelligent the way he strings his dialogue together and the way that he strings his sentences together I need not be visibly odd I could engage in the protocols that others followed and move undetected among them and how would I be sure that other people were not doing the same playing the game to be accepted, but suspecting all the time that they were different. So at first, Don is pretty stuck in his ways. He, however, as he and Rosie get to know each other better through this wife project, through this father project, Don begins to assess his own life. He begins to assess his own routines and he tries to see them a little bit more objectively. And he realizes that when a good thing comes into your life, you have to adjust. You have to get yourself out of your routine or you're going to miss out on something. And at first, this is making changes is very uncomfortable for him. I mean, he has things down to um, schedule it down to the minute. He's so routine. And when that routine is thrown off, he, you can see shuts down. So it takes him some time to learn how to change his routine, some of them, and to embrace positive changes. And that just because you've changed something in your routine, the world doesn't fall apart. <laughs> I relate to that. I'm a person who is highly regimented. Um, and when I am not spontaneous at all, I have a hard time with spontaneity. 
uh, it doesn't, I'm like, this is not what was on the timeline for today. And so, but that's not life. And as I've gotten older, I've had to learn how to adjust. Still uncomfortable, but you make it work. <laughs> um, and part of that, I think, is because in order for me to get everything done, I have to be regimented because there's just no way I can do it. You can do everything. But there, I have friends who are very spontaneous and it drives me crazy. I'm like, how do you, how, how do you function? <laughs> it, but it works for them. It works for them. And we end up balancing each other out. <laughs> anyway, but again, he, he learns how to make those changes when it's worthwhile. Having succeeded in recovering lost time, I was not about to throw my life into chaos again. That is a quote taken more from the beginning of the book when he's, again, stuck in his ways. And then these are two quotes where you can see this change happening in himself. How is he going to adjust to a new type of life? I had always justified my schedule in terms of efficiency, but was my allegiance to efficiency or was it to the schedule itself? And it dawned on me that I had not designed the questionnaire to find a woman I could, I could, it dawned on me that I had not designed the questionnaire to find a woman I could accept, but to find someone who might accept me. I'm just going to wrap it up there. The Rosie Project isn't a deep novel. Um, it's just one of those fun, quick reads. However, again, it's intelligently written. And as I said earlier, the humor is incredibly smart. The humor is not politically correct. Don is not politically correct. He has no filter. <laughs> um, and I, I wonder if this book, if this book had been published, when was it published? It was probably in the 2000s. I, I wonder, however, if this book had been published uh, now, if the criticism would be different. Published in 2013. It's crazy how much has changed in 10 years about political correctness. Um, I think he, he got away with saying some stuff here that he would be, he would have gotten in trouble for now. I'm not sure. Like, for example, Don internally, mentally calculates people's BMIs. Like, per, he's like, oh, this person has a BMI of such and such. And now, like, just go on the internet. Just go on the internet. I don't need to say anything else. Just go on the internet. Because um, but Don personally has a preference about the physical fitness of his uh potential significant other and so he just I found it funny because again I personally don't get insulted about certain things so um I just thought it was funny but again it's a quirk of dawn he has he's so set in his ways but I think the humor now if this was published today people would call it fat phobic and I'm just like okay Don just let Don be Don again quick review I don't feel like I said a whole lot but I picked up on what I wanted. I kind of highlighted as usual in my reviews what I decided to highlight. I found it I found Don to be highly relatable. If you are a person who if you're a person who can be stuck in their ways just on a routine like and it's kind of when it comes to regime, right to a re, to a regimen, that's the word I'm looking for. To a regimen, Don Don was speaking my language. Yeah, we're going to wrap this up. I'm all over the place. I'm all over the place. Maybe the heat's getting to me. It was 100 degrees yesterday without the heat index heat index or humidity factored in. Yeah. So anyway, I rated this book a 4 out of 5. This is actually part of a trilogy. I'm not actually interested in reading the other two. I think this is perfect as a standalone. I read some of the reviews from the other two. I'm not really interested for some reason. I just, this is going to stand alone in my brain. I feel like if I read the other two, it might destroy something I don't know so I gave it a four out of five I enjoyed it laugh out loud funny quick read smart smart and smart humor and there is they went there's a scene where he goes to New York City and Don in the in interacting with Americans in New York is just the best thing ever if you didn't know this author is Australian and so it, 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 this book to me is just a good time I'm gonna wrap it up there have you read this book? If not, let me know your thoughts. And if you think that this book got away with things that modern society wouldn't let it get away with, please let me know. I think another book like that, I think is like The Secret History. So politically incorrect and I love it for that. Um, what am I trying to say? Um, that's it. I'm wrapping up. Please feel free to like, subscribe, leave me a comment. Also, feel free to follow me on Instagram q split screen where i get up to more book shenanigans i post all of my book reviews there first monthly reading wrap-ups tbrs all of that stuff 
And I also like to post goofy stuff in the stories that have nothing to do with books. I mean, because for me, the internet is for a good laugh every now and then. I'm going to wrap up. I will see you in the next video.